Yeah, I'm still waiting for my silver play button, so that's why no face reveal video yet. Anyway, part 2 of the My Strange Addiction tier list, we'll just get right into it using the same tier list. If you want to know what the tiers mean and or miss the first part, here's a link to part 1. Basically, we rank the addictions and point out if they're fake or not. First up, we have the final boss of all road traffic users, the man who is addicted to cycling. My name is Tom, I'm 55 years old, I live in Mount Pleasant, Texas, and cycling is my addiction. Tom cycles nearly every day of his life for about 8 hours, so it's basically like a second job to him. It says that he's ridden about 1 million miles, which is the circumference of the earth, 40 times over. So yes, he is definitely addicted to his bike. I'm so used to this that the bike seat is no longer painful to me. Yeah, okay, maybe it's more than just an addiction actually. Tom also cycles while working, which I think is actually pretty good. It's way better than just sitting down at a desk at least. And oh yes, the infamous black screens, we are back. This one's just factual, kind of impressive to be honest though. He has spent more time on a bike than the average 30 year old has spent asleep and yeah, just look at those indents on his head. He is definitely not lying about the hours that he's putting in on that bike. Tom eventually goes to see a doctor about his cycling addiction and has his x-ray taken and it turns out that he has cycled himself to the point where he is now suffering from a joint injury that is most common in elderly women. He has severe osteoarthritis that will eventually take away his ability to walk. This could mean that it could get to a point where he can't walk anymore and is wheelchair bound. But somehow I just know that he will retain his ability to cycle. Imagine him pulling up to work on a bicycle and then it falls into a wheelchair and he just rolls into work. Final shot of the video and oh man, <laughs> oh man do I love these producers. Hey Tom, can you just stare blankly at your home bike setup and slowly shake your head while we play some somber music over it? You don't get this type of filmmaking anymore and it really is a shame. It turns out that Tom is actually an incredibly skilled athlete when it comes to cycling. He's even in the comment section flexing on the haters. Yeah that's right YouTube commenter, get dunked on by the cycling master. This guy may be one of the only cool cyclists around. He even has his own YouTube channel that I suggest you go and subscribe to and, and the last reply I saw of his was around 2 years ago saying that he's still in good health and that he still cycles, albeit not as much as he used to. So in the end, Tom was right about the cycling and not needing hip surgery, contrary to what the doctors were telling him. So for these reasons, I think I'll be putting Tom and his cycling addiction in the completely fine tier because relative to the others on this list, extreme cycling just isn't that strange. Our next strange addiction is for all you potty mouths out there. The woman who is addicted to eating soaps and detergents. I'm Tempest, I'm 19 years old, I'm in college, and I'm addicted to eating laundry detergent and soap. So Tempest just likes to raw dog spoonfuls of laundry powder, which I mean, at least she'll always have nice smelling breath, which is more than I can say for some of the people who I have had the displeasure of meeting and that's because I live in England. Tempest also likes to eat these suds from soap and like the majority of the real addictions on this tier list, it's probably due to some psychological trauma that she endured in the past. When I think about the idea of the soap and laundry detergent cleansing me, I basically mean I feel refreshed. And so if I feel refreshed on the outside, why not feel refreshed on the inside? Yeah, this kind of just reinforces what I just said. Although I believe that Tempest is faking some of it for the cameras, at least potentially, unless she's eating some organic vegan laundry detergent, but more on that later. The producers then get her to confess her addiction to her friends and their reaction is about what you'd expect. You know how like you, you get bubbles in your hands like from the soap? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I eat it, that's nasty. Then we, have, then we have another gem in the library of cinematic masterpieces in this scene right here. This is difficult because I was dealing with it and I've been dealing it I've been dealing with it for months. I didn't want any little things to jeopardize like our friendship. I'm sorry. I do think that Tempest needs to 
receive help, so maybe seeing a doctor would probably help her. The contrasting scenes of her crying and then her slow motion licking soap off her hands is just gold. Then the scary black screen is back saying that she eats around 100 bars of soap a year, which is around 2 a week. With the average bar of soap weighing around 100-ish grams, she apparently eats 10 kilograms of soap a year, or about 25 pounds. Now, fortunately for Tempest, most soaps are actually non-toxic. The main ingredient in most of them are sodium stearates that are non-toxic to humans. And when ingested, they react with the acids in your stomach and form stearic acids, which actually have a laxative effect that Tempest doesn't actually seem to mention in the video. If the 10 kilograms a year of soap didn't convince you that this addiction is fake, then the detergent eating will. Because eating detergents can cause some pretty serious burns to your mouth, throat and esophagus, which would make it near impossible to speak the way that she does. And after eating it for 6 months, it would have easily caused enough damage to be noticeable. Tempest's story then ends with her kicking the eating addiction, but she's still addicted to smelling the detergents, so it's kind of a win. But yeah, I think I've seen enough to stick this one into the fake tier. TLC really loves to do the faking the whole eating dangerous substance thing. Anyway, next we have a glassmith's worst nightmare. My name is Josh. I'm 27. I live in Worcester, Ohio, and I'm addicted to eating glass. Yes, this is Josh, who enjoys the finer things in life, such as an occasional glass of champagne. No, literally the actual champagne glass, as well as any light bulbs that he can get his hands on. How many Joshes does it take to screw in a light bulb? I mean, probably still just one Josh, except maybe give him two light bulbs though, one as a snack and one to go screw in. Josh works as a stage performer and no, his act does not involve eating glass, which is just such a waste in my opinion. That's like being born with an extra set of fully working arms and deciding to get into professional chess. Like sure, you can move your pieces easier, but the missed potential. Josh's fiance isn't very happy with this addiction. When I first saw Josh eating glass, I thought it was fake. I didn't think it was real. And when I found out that it was, I was upset and scared. Again, all these people are always somehow married or engaged. Was the 2000s really that lawless of a place where your options were really that thin? But yeah, Josh's fiance isn't happy with the idea of him eating and crunching on sharp shards of glass, which, I mean, yeah, makes sense. But that's not all. He also likes to eat bullets. The bullet eating started at a restaurant that I was working at. Somebody left a bullet at a table. And after egging out from friends, I decided to swallow it. You get a huge rush, a uh, little tingly in like my fingertips, and feel it roll around my tongue, and I can feel it going about halfway down my esophagus. Yeah, he's pretty weird. They even take him to get an x-ray done, and there's just like eight bullets in his stomach slash intestines, and everyone is just so nonchalant about it. I did do a bit of research, and... By that I mean a single Google search and found out that the show producers actually played up the whole glass eating addiction and that he only really does it for attention. Which, I don't know what's more sad to be honest, actually being addicted to eating glass or being that attention starved that you'd actually eat glass. In the end, the addiction is fake but he's still actually eating the glass and that's not fake so I don't really know where to put it now. So I guess I'll just stick him in the a little strange here. Next, we probably have one of the most likable characters out of any of the TLC shows. We have the man addicted to buying Roadkill. My name is Scott, I'm 34, and I have an addiction to remove dead animals from the road. Scott spends his day driving up and down the motorway, picking up and containing any roadkill that he encounters to give them a proper burial in a nice field. The reason why he does it makes what he does even more noble, and he does it because in 1999, he found his pet dog dead on the highway run over by a car. And I'll just let him say it in his own words because how he describes it is pretty moving. It was horrible losing her, I mean I was messed up, you know, I was crying and crying and I lost my air, you know, I was just, you know, I was their best, best friend there. And it's with this tragic backstory that he began his work of ferrying run over and forgotten animals into their graves. 
Honestly, this is some of the purest form of altruism that you'll see. He knows that most of the animals that get run over aren't even pets or that anyone will even recognize him for the work that he's doing, yet he does it anyway. In the hopes that no one ever has to feel the anguish that he did upon seeing his pet lying on the road in pieces. The video then takes a turn to try and fearmonger people with the infamous black screen, which I think is an L on the producer's part. In the video, Scott even talks about how he uses gloves, containers and a shovel to avoid getting any fluids or anything on himself. Scott also talks about how what he does is cost him friends and relationships, but sometimes you just have to do what you believe is good, regardless of what everyone else thinks. Anyway, I think that Scott is a great man, so he's going to be going into the completely fine tier. The next one is less serious. Well, it's more serious, but you know. My name is Gloria, I'm 28 years old, and my addiction is bleach. I love bleach a lot. I ain't gonna say I love more than I love myself, but I do love bleach. Gloria is addicted to bleach. She likes to clean with it, bathe in it. I mean, she even admitted that she used to eat it. When I was pregnant, I used to take pieces of tissue and dip, dip them in bleach and take them like pills. Oh yeah, she was also pregnant while she did that. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Re-reviewing the video, when she talks about how she bathes in bleach, I'm not sure if she says what I think she says, so I'll play the clip and I'll let you decide. When I say to long, my eyes have burned and my skin have tingled, so that lets me know that it's time to get out. Did she say, ass hair burned? That's a pretty specific indicator for telling her when to get out of the bleach-filled bath. Hmm, yes. I've been in here for an hour, but my arse hairs are still not singed, so I'll sit a little longer. Even auto-captions are saying it as well, so it has to be true. You know what I'm wondering is that, does she just go into the store and buy like a dozen bottles of bleach all at once, and if she does, is that not raising any alarm bells? Like... Surely someone buying hundreds of bottles of bleach a month will be on an FBI watch list or be brought in for questioning at the least. Maybe she just does what Fezzel does in Four Lions to buy her bleach. That's a great reference by the way, if you know, you know. So in the show, they make her go see a doctor who tells her that using bleach on your skin is bad for you because of the fumes slash the damage to the skin. And the doctor tells her to stop using the bleach. Cut to the next scene and she's talking about how she's so happy that all she needs to do is address the dry skin and she can continue using the bleach. Which is obviously not what the doctor told her. I was happy you know, that nothing was wrong besides dry skin and that could be fixed. Because I'm going to take her advice and go see a therapist, but it's not going to change anything. Honestly, the producers have redeemed themselves with that. Anyway, she goes to a psychiatrist in the end who isn't able to convince her to stop using the bleach and she continues to use it to this day as far as I'm aware. I think that this addiction is actually genuine. It definitely comes from the older generation, I think, because older people in general like to use bleach to clean themselves from what I've seen anyway. For these reasons, I'm probably going to put her in the a little weird tier. I feel like there's a few more steps that you can take with a bleach addiction before it can get into the strange tier. I mean, she did used to eat bleach on tissues, but... I'm going to take her word for it that she stopped doing that. Our final strange addiction is going to be another one of the Hall of Famers. My name is Nathaniel. I'm 27 years old. And I'm in a serious relationship with my car. Morning, baby. Oh, 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 oh boy. This is going to be a good one. The creepy banjo music the short montage of him up close getting absolutely freaky with the wheel and front bumper, the passion in his face, he even closes his eyes. That's a real kiss. This is cinematography at its finest. We need more of this at the Paris Film Festival. Forget your stupid silent movies in a stupid alien language that no one speaks. We need more of this. So the car that he's in a relationship is also a male car who's called Chase, meaning that Nathaniel is also gay. 
which to me just sounds like a convoluted way to come out to your parents, which we will get to later. Nathaniel is a gentleman though. This ain't no pump and dump. He treats his car love interest with a weirdly authentic romance. The favorite date would be going to the lookout area. Just lean against him a little and just be with him mainly. Love you. Honestly, I think that Nathaniel may be some misunderstood guy who just happens to really like his car, which isn't that weird. We have our times when we get sexual. Does that feel good? You're a handsome man. Mm. Love you, baby. Right. Well, clearly I have. Clearly I've spoken too soon. Look at, look at what the producers did, by the way. They got him in full studio lights in the first part, and then they asked him to get freaky in his car with this low light, shaky handheld camera quality. It makes it look like found footage from a horror movie. Okay, do I need to censor this part? And, and also, when he takes it in for repairs, does he get jealous? And if he has to replace one of the parts in his car, is it now less his boyfriend? Kind of like the ship of Theseus, except a lot more freaky. Today, Nathaniel has decided to reveal everything to his father. Yeah, this is going to go great, I can just tell. Also, by washing his car, isn't that him technically showering his boyfriend while his dad is watching? I'm just going to come out and say it, I guess. I'm in an uh, intimate relationship with Chase, um, sexually and emotionally. You're in an intimate relationship with your car? Yes. And sexually with your car? Yes. It's your car? Yes. Honestly, that didn't go nearly as bad as I thought it did. Surely that's the weirdest part of the coming out story over with. Okay. Um, certain, and it involves masturbating as well. <laughs> okay. What happened to shame, guys? No, really. The producers that put Nathaniel up to this are vultures. <laughs> but thank God they did it because this is gold. Um, so you, you rub up against it or, I mean, not, I guess like right now, you're, does this turn you on? Yes. I mean, yeah, I knew that this was part of this weird kink thing. Turns out that his dad, even though weirded out, still loves his son after this confession. But I mean, he also partly believes that it's his fault because of the divorce. Was it because of the divorce between me and your mom that did any of this? I, I feel like that may have played a small part in it. I mean, it wasn't your fault and it wasn't mom's fault. We just couldn't spend a lot of time. Yeah, his, his dad 100% believes that it was the divorce that made him this way. <laughs> but I think that the general vibe is that he's accepting of his son, which is cool. He still gets him to go to therapy about it, though. Tell me what brings you in to see me today. Well, um, I'm in an intimate relationship with my car, Chase. Okay. Uh, emotionally and sexually. Okay. This, <laughs> this literally sounds like an elevator pitch. Is he telling me about his relationship with his car or trying to get me to invest in some pyramid scheme? I've had girlfriends in the past, yeah, and they, it's always been hard. It's never worked out, I guess, because of that piece of me huh. is still attached to cars. Nathaniel the Carophile has had previous success with women, and I'm gonna guess that a sizable percentage of the people watching haven't. So, how does it feel knowing that this guy, biologically speaking, is more successful at seeking mates than you are? My excuse is that I'm a man of the Lord, what's yours? Anyway, let's see how Nathaniel is doing in a 10 year update video that TLC did. My name's Nathaniel, I live in a small rural town. Good lord, puberty hit him like a semi truck. And I'm willing to bet that he had a semi whilst getting hit by that semi. Okay. Okay, I'll 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 see myself out the door. Unfortunately, Chase is no longer part of my life. Damn. From my guess, the car either slipped or the lift mechanism broke down and down came Chase. Probably damage to the frame of the car that made it financially infeasible to get him fixed. And Nathaniel didn't take it too well. You look back and you just don't realize the things you take for granted until it's too late. And so... <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, I kind of feel bad for Nathaniel. As weird as it was, he really did love that car. And after Chase, Nathaniel did what any man going through a midlife crisis does. Yes, that's right. He buys a bunch of hoes and, and goes crazy. I was looking for new vehicles and found a, my, my baby girl online. Pretty good. I love Lex with all my heart. Thank you for all you do for me. Well, good for him, I guess. If I had my doubts that he was being genuine about his addiction before, they have thoroughly been put to rest. And, and although I can empathize with him a little, he's still going to be going near the top of the strange tier. Well, that's all we have for part two of the My Strange Addiction tier list. There's probably another part to this series in here somewhere, but that's to be decided. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, consider liking and subscribing. But other than that, thanks for watching the video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.